My name is Nell Dixon. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I go to school at Colby College. I study computer science and sociology. When I was younger, I was really interested in using STEM to like solve societal problems. And one of the things that I saw was STEM, like engineering and computer science to be kind of the catalyst for like change in, change in the world. I found computer science to be something that was really easy to pick up from all you needed to have was a laptop and internet access, and you can practically learn anything related to computer science. I learned a lot of the computer science stuff that I learned from, from YouTube videos. There are YouTubers who taught me how to program, and I kind of applied that to the current situation I was in. So I was in, I was in Houston during the hurricane, and it was kind of crazy. At first, it didn't look like there was a lot of rain. It wasn't as bad. The winds weren't as terrible. But then because there were no winds, it kind of just rained and rained and a lot of people's houses were flooded and things of that nature. So it was, it was kind of rough, you know. So when I was, when I was in Houston during the hurricane, um, I had internet access. And one of the things that I saw circulating on Facebook was a list of shelters that people could go to if they needed shelter. And I thought about it and I said, you know, it would suck if I had this list circulating, but I couldn't find out because I didn't have internet. And I was like, well, what, what could be a solution to this problem? Uh, earlier in the year, I built a tech spot to help homeless people find the nearest food and food shelter and hom um, homeless shelter for them. And I thought maybe I could repurpose the technology in order to address this particular use case, which is people finding hurricane shelters. Yeah. So I got a list of shelters, about 20 shelters, from the local news station on the Facebook post that they made. Mm -hmm. and got that information and put it into the text bot so that individuals could simply text their zip code or their address and find out where is the nearest shelter. As a programmer, you kind of learn how to make things really quickly. So during Hurricane Harvey, building the text bot made about, took about four hours of time. So I tested it out and it was working perfectly fine. And after that, I, pit, I showed, it, showed it off on Facebook and a couple of people in the tech community were like really interested and they wanted to help me out. They said, you know, this is a great product, but you know, one problem is the shelters need to be updated. So a lot of us got together and started calling each shelter one by one and updating the information on whether they can accept more people or not. So it's about 90 people going through this list of, list of shelters, um, updating the list, adding to the list, making sure that we had the best list of um, shelters available. One of the challenges that came about using the text spot is that you had to know the phone number in order to text to it. So I went on many different social media platforms, on Facebook, Twitter, to let people know about the existence of, some te of this particular technology. Um, and I got organizations to tweet, tweet about it. I think even the mayor um, tweeted about this text spot. So what I really hoped for was people to kind of talk about it with their friends, and from that I needed to make sure that at least a lot of people with internet knew about this thing to exist. Getting involved in that project was something that, it can't just be explained based off of being in Hurricane Harvey, it kind of has to be explained with kind of what I was doing in high school. So when I was in high school, I really wanted to figure out if computer science was the career for me, and one of the things that I found online on meetup.com was the, this local group of people that developed technology to, to solve society or ci uh, civic issues. And I was like, oh, this is, seems like an interesting um, like meetup. And um, I was like, okay, I want to I wanna join. It was interesting kind of learning what people were doing in the city of Houston with technology. And that made me really excited. So from there, I became involved with either starting my own projects related to civic and gay, or civic problems or hopping on other people's projects to help them out. I worked on projects related to um, helping people find affordable housing education classes. Um, I developed technology to help address human trafficking. Um, I've also developed technology to address homelessness. There are a lot of um, cool projects that I was able to work on and a lot of cool people I was able to meet in this experience. With that, I kind of became like a reputable member in the community and when I made this text spot um, during the hurricane, a lot of people who were in the community were like, oh wow, this is really cool and really helpful. 
um, we should definitely help you out. Like my story was covered in a lot of news outlets, and I re I was reached out to by a guy who worked at a, or started a nonprofit called Humanitarian Toolbox. He told me that they worked on natural disaster relief technology development, and they wanted to help. They wanted to sponsor the technology that I developed, and they're basically working with me um, to help develop the technology so that um, the update of the information is a lot simpler. Um, the access of the information is a lot easier and, and there are different ways that you can access the information other than just simply text message. So we're redeveloping the technology so that it can be used for almost any use case outside of just finding the nearest hurricane shelter. We're so also working on partnering with FEMA and Red Cross, and, uh, Red Cross to hopefully if they adopt the technology um, and do some actual test case in simulated hurricane experiences. The thing that I dream about doing with my degree is being a civic tech consultant, um, developing technology to address local and state government issues. That's kind of, that's kind of the ambition that I have for myself.